Hey guys, in today's video, we are going over all of the global settings on the Helix. So we're gonna go over the ins and outs, the preferences, MIDI and tempo, foot switches, expression pedals, displays, and more. So I know this is not the most interesting topic in the world. However, I guarantee during some point in this video, you're gonna have a aha moment and you're gonna go, I didn't know that my Helix could do this. And you're gonna change your settings and you're gonna get more use out of your Helix because of it. That happened to me while I was doing research about this video. There were a few settings in here that I didn't know existed while I was putting this video together and I changed my settings and I get better use out of my Helix. So it's definitely definitely worth watching. So the video is going to be pretty long because obviously there's a lot to cover. I am going to leave time codes down in the description down below if there's something specifically that you're looking for. If you're looking for how to change your foot switches or something specific, you can skip to that spot. However, I do recommend that if you have the time to watch the video, I would watch the whole thing just because at some point you're going to go, oh, I didn't know that I could do this with my Helix. And when you do have that moment, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you changed to help you get the most use out of your gear. So before we get started, I post videos like this all the time, stuff on Helix, HX Stomp, wireless, in-ear monitors, MIDI programming, stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell. All right, let's get started. So you can see there's six different sections, ins and outs, preferences, MIDI tempo, foot switches, expression pedals, and displays. I was gonna go in order, but I'm gonna do this in what I think is gonna be most interesting for you. So I'm gonna start with the bottom row, actually, and then I'm gonna do preferences and MIDI slash tempo, and then I'm gonna end with ins and outs. I think ins and outs is the most complicated. So in order to keep this video as interesting as possible, that's the order I'm gonna do it in. The way that you get to your global settings, if you don't know, wherever you are, push the three line buttons up here, down at the bottom, global settings. Okay, so for foot switches, so stomp select, you have off, touch, press, or both. So what that does is there's something really cool with the Helix. So when I touch, when I tap the side of this chorus button or the tremolo right here, see how it loads it up on the screen? So if I want to change the parameters really quick, if I say I'm like, oh, the rotary drum, I really want to change the parameters really quick and I really want to change the drive. Oh, I want to change the chorus, tap the side, and then what, I'm going to change this parameter. That's really helpful. If you don't want that to happen, you can turn it to off. Now, when I tap, you know, the side of it, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't select that pedal. Putting it back on. Now you can see that it, it does select whichever parameters I've touched the side on. You can also set it to press. So when I touch the side, it doesn't do anything, but when I press it, see, so when I press the button, then it loads it up. See how it loads it? So when I push the tremolo, it'll load the tremolo, and I can mess with the parameters. And you can also set it to both, so if you tap the side or if you touch it, it automatically loads it. To me, I just like having the touch because then it's really quick. Oh, I really wanna change the tremolo, I don't have to search for it, and I can change the parameters here, which is pretty convenient. Then also, just a really quick shortcut, say you, want, you didn't like what you did and I wanna set it back to where it was, just tapping the, the dial. So say I just set the level up to wherever I set it to, Pushing the button will set it back to its original parameter settings. All right, scrolling over, preset mode foot switches. So you have a lot of options here. You have either eight presets, preset stomp, stomp preset, preset snapshot, snapshot preset, snapshot stomp, stomp and snap, or eight snapshots. So what that does, as you can see right here, I use snapshot mode. If you're not familiar with snapshot mode, I did a whole video on it, so be sure to check that out. But so here's my clean, here's my distortion, here's my lead, and here's kind of just like a general overdrive. This is my main setup because I have this set to eight snapshots. If I change this to eight presets, now it's set to preset. Or if I want uh, presets on top, so see it says preset slash stomp. So that's preset up here, stomps down here. Or I can set it to stomps up on top, presets on the bottom. What I actually have decided to switch to is stomp and snapshot. For the most part, I usually have four tones, a clean, a distortion, a lead, and this is kind of just like a like an overdrive, so it's kind of halfway between distortion and, and clean. But then I can have access to different controls up here, which is, which is definitely convenient. So if I don't plan to use eight snapshots, I don't need to use that. Sometimes, however, I do like to have eight snapshots, depends on the, on the gig that I'm doing. So again, I'm gonna leave it just on eight snapshots just for this video. So also uh, stop mode foot switches, do you want eight 
or 10 foot switches. So this is when you're in stop mode, which again, this is why I like snapshot mode because I can be in snapshot mode and then hit mode and have access to all of my pedals. When you set, so right now it's set to 10 foot switches. So I have 10 of them, five up here, five down here. If I set that to eight, now these become bank up and down. So then I can change to different banks if I really wanted to. To me, I leave it on 10 because in order to get to bank, I just push mode and then I can go to bank. So to me, I've set that to 10. I believe by default, it's set to eight. So I switch that to 10 so I have more access to the different buttons I want. Snapshot mode switches, auto return or manual return. So this one's a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna put this back to eight foot switches. So if I push the two bank buttons together, it loads the snapshot mode and then to push the same two buttons to get back to stomp mode. So snapshot mode auto return. So when I'm in here, so I switch to lead, then it gives me access to all my individual pedals instead. That's the setting for auto return. If I want manual return, when I'm in snapshot mode and I load snapshot, it doesn't go to the blocks. So I can just change between the snapshots. And then in order to get out of it, I hit cancel in order to go into the controlling the blocks. Does that make sense? It might be a little bit confusing. So again, in order, you have to be on eight foot switches. When you're on eight foot switches, you push these two buttons together to get to your snapshot mode. After you select a snapshot, do you want it to stay in snapshot mode, which will be manual return. So it just stays here or you set it to auto return. So then whatever preset I select, whatever snapshot I select, it automatically goes to stomp mode. Banks up and down switch. So what do you want these two to do? Do you want it to be bank? Do you want it to be preset up and down? Or do you want to be snapshot up and down? I have a feeling most of you are going to use bank up and down. But if you want to, you know, move preset up and down, you can do that. And if you just want to swap up and down, so see how this is down and this is up. Oops, <laughs> I actually, so while I was setting this up, it was already there. This is up and this is down. That makes the most sense. This is up and this is down. If you want to swap it for some reason, you want this to go up and this to go down, you have that option. All right, scrolling over to expression pedals. All right, expression one, two, and three, polarity, normal or inverted. So you have three expression pedals with the Helix. You have the one that's built in and they have two extra inputs. Most of the time for the first one, you're probably not gonna have to change it. But with the second one, if the expression pedal is not responding the way you want it to, so say you have an external volume pedal, right? And when normally when you have a volume pedal, when you push the volume pedal down, it brings the volume up. And then when you pull it up like this, it brings the volume pedal down. Say it's doing the exact opposite of what you want. You just switch it to inverted and then it reverses the signal. So if you're having problems with an external expression pedal, try flipping the polarity and see if that fixes it. And again, you have the control over expression two and expression three. Expression pedal one, two, three position. Again, these are all the same. So you have three different expression pedals. All three have the same options. You can either remember the position globally per preset or per snapshot. So for example, let me zoom out a little bit. All right, time to put the light back on for this one just so you can see it. So say on this preset right here on my main setup, this is my volume, this is my volume control. I want wherever it's set. So if it's right here, it's all the way on. When it's right here, it's the volume's all the way off. If I want it to always remember where it's at, it doesn't matter what preset I'm on, I just set it to global. So now whatever it's set at, the Helix remembers that the volume is set here. If it's set, you know, at 100% and the volume's up it, and I switch to different presets, so I go to this one, then load this one, it always just remembers where this is at. However, for example, if I want this to remember per preset, so now when I load this one, Halo, it remember I can I program it to remember oh I want it to start at you know 49% or 50% and I save this preset with expression pedal 1 at 50% whenever I load halo it will remember that expression pedal 1 is set at 50% you can also take it to the extreme and put it per snapshot so every snapshot that I have it remembers where my expression pedal is set at most of the time I think you're going to want that set to global that's going to be my guess, but it all depends on you when you have that control over expression pedal two and expression pedal three as well. All right, back to dark mode so you can see what's going on. All right, scrolling over, we are now to displays. Dim slash bright for the LED 
you either have off or you have it on dim. So if you look, see how, you know, the distortion is like this orange color. Any modulation is a blue, delay is green. If See how it's dim, and then when I push it, it's bright. If you want it just off, now those are off, and then when you push it, it turns on. So it's completely off. You don't even see like a dim blue and then the lit, lit up blue or off and the completely lit up blue. That might be actually valuable for uh, if, you're, if it's super bright out because when it's super bright out, you kind of have trouble seeing, oh, is this on or off or is it just dim? So that's, that's actually pretty helpful. The tap tempo LED. So you have this, the tap tempo LED right here. It's always blinking. So this is the tempo that I'm at. You can turn it off right there if it bugs you, but I always leave that on. Pedal position display. You have persistent or temporary. This, I honestly couldn't get this to work. I don't know if this is a glitch with the uh, firmware version that I'm on, but to see how when I move the volume up or, you know, expression pedal up or down, it tells me if it's at 100%, 90%, and so on and so forth. Normally when you have this set to temporary, it goes away, but I mean, it's still there. So now, you know, I'll put it back to persistent so that it's always on. And it's always on. So I don't know how, why it's not working. So if you don't want it to, for some reason, always display that, you can turn that off. But I mean, to me, it's, it's definitely always worth keeping on. This tempo BPM display is actually really nice. So persistent or temporary. So when it's on temporary, you can see that when I tap in a tempo, it tells me that I just tapped, you know, 91.2, right? And, but if I leave it on persistent, it'll always just tell me that's on 91.2. So that's actually really nice because I don't need to remember that this is, you know, the tap tempo. Uh, it's nice to actually just see what beats per minute I'm at. Uh, so I leave that on persistent, which is actually really nice. So just something really cool about the tap tempo. If you tap the side of it, it actually brings up this info here on the side. So it's really quick. So I'll tap it again. It brings up this. And then I can, you know, change the tempo here. Pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going into preferences. So snapshot edits. So if you you either have recall or discard. If you're not familiar with snapshot mode, watch my video on it. I did a video on that. I did it in the HX stomp, but you, this, the settings are very, very similar. So on snapshot five, let's say, so snapshot mode, basically just you have, this is, these are all of your settings. What do you want on and off? Let's say I want the distortion on the reverb off and the pitch off. So in this setting right here in snapshot five, which I'm going to save as snapshot five. So now when I go to snapshot six, I want the opposite. I want the compressor on, the distortion off and the bass on. So again, I'm gonna save that. So now you can see when I switch between those, see how they turn on and off. So on this one, the first two are off and the first one's on. This next one, it's the, reverse, but you have this option of discard or recall. So what discard does means that if I'm on snapshot six and then, you know, I go to this mode and I turn volume pedal off the graphic, you know, whatever buttons I decide to change in here. And then I go back to snapshot mode. If I go to snapshot five and then back to snapshot six, it's going to discard every change that I made. It's not going to remember it. So that means whatever I have saved for snapshot six, it's going to just always go recall snapshot six as I saved it. Now with recall mode, um, I'm going to turn those three settings off. Now watch what happens. When I go to snapshot five, I'm playing around in snapshot five. I go back to snapshot six it remembered all of those settings that I just made. So whatever I did last in snapshot six, it remembers that. I leave that on discard because I always want snapshot five to be exactly how I saved it. Snapshot six needs to be exactly how I saved it, so on and so forth. Okay, so the tap tempo pitch. This is actually really useful and I actually changed the settings on this. So you have authentic or transparent. So what happens is when you, ha when you play like a delay, so that's a delay sound that I have. When you change the tempo while it's echoing, 
See how it does like that weird like chipmunk type of thing or it makes it sound like it's going to space. Let me actually set the delay up a bit just to make it easier. So let's do a nice slow tempo. See how it makes it all sound all weird and pitchy and stuff like that? If you don't want that sound, set it to transparent. So now I'll set it back to a slow. See how it changes and it doesn't make the pitch sound all weird? It's nice and slow. See how it didn't make it sound all weird and pitchy and like that? So that's where you can change the setting right there, which is really nice because sometimes I'll change the tempo and I don't want it to do that weird ambient type of sound. However, just keep in mind, if you do that type of thing where, you know, you mess with the milliseconds because you want that type of sound, it doesn't matter what your settings are here. It just changes the tap tempo. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, preset memories, that's pretty basic. You can either set it to zero through 127 or 01A through 32D. On the HX stomp, I actually switched mine to here, but on the Helix, I actually kind of like having them labeled this way. So when you switch through your banks, you have 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, or you can change it here. So it says, you know, zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay, snapshot reselect is reload or toggle previous. This one's really interesting. So in snapshot mode, again, if you don't know about snapshot mode, watch my video. But say I, uh, you know, this is my overdrive one, overdrive, lead light, swells, stuff like that. So what happens when you push the button the, of the snapshot that you're on? If you push it while it's on reload, it just reloads it. If you do toggle previous, so if I'm on light and I go to overdrive, the last one that I was on was the lead light channel. So when I push it, it's gonna jump back to lead light. When I push this, it's gonna jump back to overdrive because that was the last one I was on. If I go to swell and then lead light, the last one that I was on was swell. So when I push it, it jumps back to swell. Really interesting. Uh, in my HX stomp video that I did, I said, I don't understand why you would do that. And I did get a few comments of these are the reasons why people would use it. If you want to pause and see if that applies to you, feel free. I just leave it on reload personally. Okay, joystick encoder, model or selection. So this is interesting. So, so when I move the joystick, you can see that it, you know, when I push like left or right, which way does it go? But when I twist it, what happens is right now it switches through the modulation because that's the one I'm selected on. So it'll scroll through those. If you don't want that to happen, you can set the model to selection. So what happens instead when you twist it, it actually just acts like it moves left or right. See what I mean? So instead of changing it, it just basically acts like you push left or right. Where what could be nice about that is if you accident, I've done that before, where I've accidentally what I've meant to push like left or right, and I accidentally twisted this. And then like my, my settings got all jacked up. So it could be valuable to have that set. If, you, if, if that's a problem for you, definitely set it to selection. I usually just leave it on model though, in case if I do want to scroll through the sounds. Preset spillover. Okay, this one is fascinating. This one is with the new firmware update. So you have to be on version three, I believe, or up. Preset spillover is awesome. So it makes you, when you switch between presets, if I'm on this setup, this one, and I switch to the banjo setup, I don't want any pause in the audio. Because if you have preset spillover off, you'll get a tiny, tiny pause when you switch between presets. If you turn this on, it doesn't do that. However, what it does is it takes, see how I have two lines right here, the two paths right here. If I set this on, it's going to add, it's going to say remove path two to enable preset spillover. So I'm not going to change that because that's going to mess up all of my settings, but you would no longer have access to this lower part here and you would only have access to this top chain right here. So there is a, this takes up a lot of DSP in order to do this. Some people really like that feature and that's why they added it. There is another video that I found that is going to explain this a lot better. So I'll post a link to that down in the description down below. It's definitely worth watching if you're interested in that preset spillover. But basically when you're changing presets, if you don't want that tiny gap, that's how you would change it. But you do make that sacrifice since it is so DSP heavy. 
Scrolling over, audio impedance, first block or first enabled. This is a screenshot from the manual for this one. In all honesty, the impedance stuff is not my area of expertise. This is a little bit confusing. If you know exactly what this means or when you would use this as first block or first enabled, go ahead and leave a comment down below. It's a little above my pay grade. Okay, so scrolling over to MIDI and tempo. If you are not familiar with MIDI, so I've done multiple videos on my channel. I do a lot of MIDI stuff about how to control your Helix units with MIDI. So I actually use that. We play to backing tracks with some of my some of my bands. And instead of me having to step on this button, you know, this button for the for the chorus, and then this part for the verse, and then this part for my guitar solo, I actually control it with MIDI. And right when the chorus happens, because again we play to backing tracks and a click track, the helix will change for me. So I no longer have to pedal dance. I no longer have to be even near my helix, but it'll change for me. So if you're interested in doing that, check out my videos. I've done multiple videos on that. I'll post a link in the upper right as well as in the description down below. And if MIDI goes over your head completely, if you don't know anything about MIDI, I've also done videos explaining that as well. So be sure to check that out. So if some of this goes a little bit over your head, don't worry, but I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So the MIDI bass channel. So you in MIDI, you get MIDI channel 1 through 16 or Omni. What is the MIDI bass channel that you want to send and receive information on on your Helix? I usually tell people, if you're going to control more than one thing with MIDI, just get used to setting it to anything else. So I control multiple pieces of gear with MIDI. So my Helix, I have decided to set to MIDI channel 4 so that HX Stomp will only respond to information sent on MIDI channel 4. MIDI through on or off. So the MIDI output of the Helix can either act as just an output or a through. So what happens is any MIDI information that goes in to the in, do you want to pass that information through out of the MIDI through? So that's useful if you're daisy chaining a signal. So you know, you're sending MIDI information from, let's say, a computer to your Helix and then sending that information out to a keyboard to change the patches on the keyboard. So you would obviously want that set to through. So MIDI information would go out of your computer. MIDI channel four is what your Helix would read on. And then let's say MIDI channel three is what you have set to for your keyboard to read on. Your computer is sending information on MIDI channel four and three. Helix will read on MIDI channel four. It will ignore the information on MIDI channel three and pass that information through to your keyboard in order to change patches. So again, that's useful if you're daisy chaining MIDI information. And if you're not familiar with how you can use your Helix as a MIDI controller to send MIDI information, I did a video about that, again, about the HX stomp, but the idea is very similar. So receive MIDI clock information. Do you want to receive MIDI clock information? MIDI clock is helpful because you can sync up tempos and stuff like that. So if you've connected this to Ableton and Ableton is set to 120 beats per minute, you can receive that MIDI clock information and your Helix will set to 120 beats per minute and stuff like that. It's useful for many other things. Uh, look up MIDI clock if you're interested in it. But you can either have it off. Do you want to only receive MIDI clock information with the MIDI port? Do you want to only receive it over USB? Or do you want to just auto receive it wherever it gets MIDI clock information from? It listens. Do you want to send MIDI clock information? So do you want, so receive is useful if you're getting the MIDI clock information from something like Ableton or something like that. Send MIDI clock is if you want the Helix to be the MIDI clock information. You really want it to send the MIDI clock information to somewhere else. So do you want to send that out via the MIDI port, the USB, or both? or you don't want to send anything. All right, so that's MIDI stuff. Tempo, tempo select, this is really cool. Do you want the tempo to be remembered per every snapshot, per every preset, or just globally, whatever you have it set to, it remembers. So I actually have this set to per preset. And the reason why is because you can see here, I have all of, this is my old band, but all of our songs have their own different preset because I have, you know, different sounds that I wanted to use and blah, blah, blah. But this song, for example, was is at 220. That's where I want the delay set to. This one was set to 216. This one is set to 132 because we play to a click and backing track. So I wanted each song to automatically be synced with the correct beats per minute. If I did not want that to happen, I could just set it to global and then doesn't matter what I switch to. See, it's still on 120. And let's switch to this one. It's still on 120. It's still on 120. Now when I tap, and now it's set to 95, whatever that was, and now I go to a different preset, it still remembers what tempo I just set everything to. So for me, 
I have that set to per preset because I want the Helix to remember what beats per minute I set my delays to per song because again, we play to a click track. It's super useful for me. Oh, uh, but also this tempo select, you can set it per snapshot too. So snapshot five, I can set to 99, you know, whatever. Set this one to 120 set this one to 130 or so on and so forth. But I have it set to per preset personally. And then if you do want to change your global uh, beats per minute, you can do that here. Scrolling over MIDI over USB. Are you sending and receiving MIDI information over USB? If you are, turn it on. If not, turn it off. I'm going to leave that one on. So MIDI program changes. If you're not familiar with what program changes are, don't forget to watch my video. I explain all the different parameters of MIDI. But do you want to for the Helix to receive program change information? If so, you have you can either set it to off because you don't want it to. You want it to only receive information via the MIDI port, only over the USB port, or over both. If you want the Helix to send program change commands, if you don't want it to, turn it to off. Do you want to use the Helix to send MIDI commands out of the MIDI port, out of the USB port, or out of both? Again, watch my videos if you're interested in finding out more about that. Duplicate PC send on or off. So Helix automatically will send out a program change command when you select a preset. So for example, this is going to send out program change one. This will send out program change two. This will send out program change three, so on and so forth. If you do not want it to do that, you would set it to off. If you do want it, you would set it to on. I actually do not want it to do that. So ins and outs is kind of the most boring one and probably the most complicated, but I still think this is definitely worth knowing. So you have your guitar in pad off or on. And this one, this is just if you have a super hot guitar, like an active pickup, or just in general, you think your guitar is going in too hot, go ahead and turn the pad on. So if you have active pickups, it might be worth trying to turn it on. If not, just leave it on off. But again, trust your ear. Mic in phantom power on or off. So are you using the mic input on the Helix? If so, do you need the phantom power on? Like if you're using a condenser mic, turn it on here. There is this warning in the manual. Just keep that in mind if you do plan to use this. If you are using the mic input, you can adjust the gain here, turn it up or turn it down. It goes from zero decibels up to 60 decibels. So the mic in low cut. So the mic input, you get your own EQ settings. So it's nice to scoop out, you know, probably 90 to 100 hertz. It's useful to scoop out anywhere from like 80 to 100 because you don't really need anything lower than that for voice. So the USB in one and two destination. So this just sets the routing of the USB audio. If you're not using USB audio, you don't have to worry about this. But do you want the USB audio to go out of the quarter inch outputs in the back, just the XLR outputs in the back, or both. So the USB one and two bypasses all the processing of the Helix. So it's nice for like backing tracks and stuff like that. This is the USB in trim for a USB one and two. This just sets the level of incoming audio from USB one and two. So you can change the audio here if you need to turn it up or down, but most of the time you're not gonna have to worry about that. Scrolling over. So quarter inch outputs, line or instrument. So trust your ear on this for the most part. In general, you want to set this to instrument if you're running into like an amp or something like that. So if you're going guitar into the Helix and then Helix out to an amp or other pedals and then an amp and stuff like that, set it to instrument. If you are like me and you use it direct, go ahead and set it to line. So the XLR outputs, do you want it set to mic or line? If you're going into something that's expecting a mic level signal, use mic. If you're going into something like a line level input on a mixer, set it to line. If you're unfamiliar with info on mic versus line level, I'll post a link in the description down below so you can find out more about that. Mic is quieter, line is louder. But again, this isn't really a video about that. Link is in the description down below. If you're interested in finding out more about that, you can just set it here. So send one through four all have the same option, instrument or line. All four of them have that same settings, instrument or line. So again, watch that video in the description if you aren't familiar with the differences. But in general, if you're using the send and return, if you're sending out to another pedal or something like that, use set it to instrument. If you're using it with line level processors to connecting stuff to like connecting the Helix with like keyboards or drum machines or something, set it to line. So again, super, super basic instrument is quieter, line is going to be louder. If it's too quiet, try setting it to line. If it's too loud, set it to instrument. Again, trust your ear on this and watch that video if you're interested in finding out more.
All right, so this next part right here is pretty complicated. I had to look this one up. So with the Helix, USB out seven and eight are used for recording a direct signal, which is nice to have for reamping. This setting here chooses which inputs will send a completely dry signal to your DAW for recording. So if you're recording in Logic or something like that, USB seven is going to send a completely dry signal from either the guitar input, the aux input, the variax input, variax mags or the mic input and then usb 8 you can set you have the same options set it to guitar aux variax variax mags or mic if you are interested in more videos on reamping there will be a link in the description down below all right next up the volume knob controls so the master volume knob this guy right here so this knob right here, the master volume knob, what outputs do you want to be affected by that knob? So you can set it to multi, XLR, and quarter inch, just quarter inch, just XLR, or just the digital output. Most of the time, you're probably going to want that on multi because you want to turn up and down everything. That's your master volume control. So what you could do is you could set this to just quarter inch out to send the quarter inch out to just a personal monitor. So you're using it as, as a monitor to listen to on stage. And then XLR goes to front of house to be mixed. So now when you turn up your volume, it's not turning up the volume in the front of house. It's just turning up the volume to your personal monitor that you're using. So that can be really useful because you, you know, you know, you obviously don't want to be turning up and down the volume to what signal you're sending to front of house in order to turn up your personal monitor, you're going to drive your sound guy crazy. So whatever you have this set to the, everything else will be set to unity gain. So if I set this to quarter inch and XLR out digital output will just be unity gain. If I set it to just XLR quarter inch out will be to unity gain. If I set it just to digital quarter inch out and XLR out will just be set to unity gain. And this doesn't do anything to the volume. So I have this set to multi headphone monitor. So what do you want to hear? What signal do you want to hear out of the headphones? Do you want to hear only what's going out of quarter inch? Only what's going out of XLR or everything? So that can be useful if you if you're using this with headphones and you only want to hear what's coming out of quarter inch, not the XLR. All right, the digital output. I honestly don't use digital output, but this is for the settings of the digital output. You can only use one at a time. You can either use the SPDIF or Sometimes I've heard it called our SPDIF or the AES slash EBU in the back. So you only get to use one of those at a time. If you don't even connect those, you don't even have to worry about it. But if you do plan to use those, you set them here. The digital out level, it's that same thing that I was just talking about. You can just set the volume right here, the output level to whichever one you're on. So if you set it to this one, this controls the output level. All right, scrolling over to one more. You also have control of your sample rate right here. You have your standards 44.1, 48. 88.2 and 90 kilohertz. This is the sample rate of the digital out. So again, if you don't use digital out, you don't really have to worry about it. All right, so that is basically it. You guys made it to the end. There is something I do just want to go over really quick with you. So the same thing where you push these three buttons, you do also have this global EQ right here. Um, something that I like to do is I actually like to put a low cut in everything below about 80. I don't really need anything below 80. And I actually scoop out, I cut out stuff almost down to like 8,000 kilohertz because it kind of makes it sound a little cleaner that way, in my opinions. And you can also set the EQ so it only applies to quarter inch out, only to XLR out, or to both, which is really cool. But you do have a global EQ settings in here. So, but congratulations, you made it to the end of this long video. So if you made it to the end of this video, just do me a favor, just hit the like button. It's a, it did take a while to put this together. If, if you made it to the end, I'm assuming you got some use out of it. So hitting the like button does a lot to help out the YouTube algorithm. It does help push my channel out and recommend this video to more people. So I would definitely appreciate it. I do have links in the description down below to other videos explaining more. So if you're interested in going more of a deep dive into it, don't forget to check out the links in the description down below. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I will post videos like this all the time on different stuff about the Helix and the HX Stomp. Check out my playlist about the Helix and the HX Stomp. I've done quite a bit of deep dives into different ways to get the most use out of your Helix and HX Stomp. I think they're great units and I use them all the time and it's my main setup actually. So thank you guys again for watching. If you did find something useful that gave you your aha moment, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know what parameters you changed. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.